Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to try something new. I think I'm going to call this Thursday Thoughts. And it's just, I'm going to share some quick thoughts with you, and hopefully it's something you can take with you and give you something to think about. I've been praying all week, asking the Lord, what what should I share for, for this first Thursday? And for some reason, the thing that kept popping in my mind over and over again is the schism that happened after Joseph Smith was murdered. And I thought, I don't really understand. Everybody knows about this. What What's what's the big deal? But I'm going to share you my thoughts, and then I'm going to share you the thought I had this morning as well about that thought. A lot of people don't know this, but when Joseph Smith was killed, there were at least five different Latter-day Saint churches at that time. And that's before he died. After he died, of course, as everybody knows, the main body got into an argument as to who was supposed to be in charge. Most of the churches, the, when I say this, I mean the congregations, stayed out of the fight. And it was really just the Nauvoo saints that had this battle. And the Nauvoo saints voted that they would follow Brigham Young, who started a new church in 1847. Then it was legally or, excuse me. Then it was legally organized in 1851, and he had people rebaptized into it from I believe it was 1852 or 53 to 1854. And we know that James Strang received a letter from Joseph Smith, but more importantly, he was ordained by an angel. People can contest the letter all they want to, but at the end of the day, an angel comes to you and ordains you. That's that's how Joseph Smith received the priesthood and, and received his calling. So that one's a little more difficult to argue with. But the same thing happened to Sidney Rigdon. Now you can go to the scriptures and say, well, according to, well, I, I take that back, I'm sorry. Sidney Rigdon had an angel come and tell him to be the guardian of the church. He already had the keys given to him, uh, section 90. And I don't remember what section it is in the Community of Christ RLDS edition, but it's section 90. I believe verse 6 in the Salt Lake City Church, the Brighamites Doctrine and Covenants, says that that Sidney Rigdon is, is equal to Joseph Smith in keys, power, and authority. So technically, he had every right to take over, except that Joseph Smith, I'm sorry, except that James Strang was ordained by an angel and told by the Lord he was supposed to take over, and well, whereas Sidney Rigdon was only told he was supposed to be a guardian, and Brigham Young had the vote of the saints, which works for, I guess, the first chapter of the Book of Commandments, which would be Doctrine and Covenants, Section 1. The header there originally stated, and I believe this is only in Doctrine of the Saints and uh, Book of Commandments, that Joseph Smith was called by the voice of the saints. And so since the voice of the saints sustained Brigham Young, that gave him that authority, if that's how Joseph Smith got some of his authority. And, of course, Doctrine and Covenants 107 for the Salt Lake City Church and for the RLDS Community of Christ 104 states that when the 12 vote is won, that's equal in power and authority to the First Presidency. So even though their First Presidency is really just an extension of 12 apostles, when all 15 of them vote is won, they're fulfilling that and, and they're fine. They, they technically don't have the keys to the First Presidency because none of them were ordained by an angel and none of them received the keys to the First Presidency. Who cares? This is a fascinating subject. It's fun to explore. It's fun to look at. But I was walking my kids to the bus, and I'm like, why, why does this matter? We fight so much already as Latter-day Saints. Do we really need more things to fight about? Do we really need to get into the nitty-gritty about uh, who should be who and who should be what? I mean, in my opinion, James Strang should have been the president of the church. Brigham Young should have been the president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Sidney Rigdon should have been the first counselor in the first presidency. Emma Smith actually probably should have been the first counselor, and Sidney Rigdon second, if you want to get really down to it. Regardless, they didn't. It fell apart, just like we're falling apart now. 200 strong, maybe two, more than 200 different branches of the same movement. So I'm walking my kids to the bus, and I'm like, God, I don't understand why you're putting this in my heart. Why, why is it that this is what I'm thinking about? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was walking in the bus and said, 
because I want my people to know that they're not alone. And I thought, yeah, that makes sense. I still remember when I still belonged to the Brighamite Church. You'd hear all know, oh, we're the only church of the Book of Mormon. Well, that obviously isn't true. We're the only church with prophets. Well, obviously that isn't true. Only church with apostles. Well, obviously that isn't true either. But you have these people screaming this stuff. Where are you going to go? You leave us, you've got nowhere. I mean, that's abusive. That's spiritually abusive. Of course you have somewhere else to go. There's no one single church that has temples. There's no one single church that has temple rites. There's no one single church that has any of the sacraments. It excludes all others. Only together, as a Latter-day Saint movement, do we have everything. Yeah, the Brighamites are huge. They've got temples everywhere, but they don't let everybody in, right? And they don't have the keys of the First Presidency, so they don't receive revelation like other branches do. The Community of Christ is awesome. They receive revelations. They're very welcome to everybody. They have a temple, but they don't have the rituals. I could go on, but I'm not going to. I don't want this to be a lecture. I don't want it to be too long. What I want you to know is that there are options and you're not alone. If you feel the Lord telling you, hey, it's time to move on. This church isn't right for you. Do some research. You may have to meet with people online, but you're not alone. And there are other places you can go. And the Lord accepts all of them. We, as human beings, say, just this church. But the Lord says, all of my churches, all of my people, you are all Israel. So my thought for you today isn't the schism. It's not who was the correct successor for Joseph Smith, because no one cares. Not really. When you get to heaven, God's not going to be like, all right. Got a quiz for you here. Question number one. Who was the correct successor to Joseph Smith? No, it's what's in your heart. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you building that relationship? Are you fellowshipping with other saints? Trying to help others build their relationship with Jesus Christ? It doesn't matter where you go. If you're doing that, you're never alone. So that's my Thursday thought for you. I hope it gives you a sense of comfort, peace, and well-being, and something to think about. I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.